So, Marco, how were you um, able to facilitate the purchasing or the selling of the tickets for the Cortica at MetLife? Um, I've had a good amount of training from my internship this past summer with the New York Mets, where I learned how to run an event like that, and also uh, in my classes, marketing and management, and everything I've taken in the business school throughout my four years, just slowly learning um, what it takes to put on a large-scale event like that and create that buying and that fun atmosphere that everyone so desires. Mm-hmm. Now, um, obviously, it's a, different, a little different sport than uh, you know baseball, where you had the internship, but um, and different level. Um, but so, how is the role different and similar from what you expected? Um, even though they were different sports, <clears throat> I think that all sport is the same in that it's a, a community outreach aspect where people are really just going to the game to spend good time with their friends and. And the sport doesn't matter as much as you might think. Um, I think there's a lot of parallels to be drawn between football and baseball as far as a spectator sport where people come and uh, they enjoy everything from the space they're sitting in to the food to the drink to the game itself and the people they're with. So um, I think I drew some parallels between baseball and football like that and just try to create an experience similar to the, the best games I saw this summer at City Field. Okay. Now, you're also a athlete, you're a varsity baseball player, um, yep. and obviously it was the offseason while most of this was, while this was going on, but how were you able to balance um, the athletics with the academics, as well as obviously this uh, huge role that you had to do with the uh, Cortica? Well, yeah, I was definitely busy, Michael, um, <laughs> but the main thing that I just tried to do and maintain throughout this whole process was just be where my feet are. It's a, a very simple saying, but I just try to live that out every day where... When I'm in class, I just I'm in class and I'm focusing on what's going on there. And when I'm at the baseball field or doing anything baseball related, I'm just 100 percent focused on that. And then when it was time to work on Cortica, I was just 100 percent focused on that. And by doing that, I just made the most of my time and didn't really let it catch up to me. And I was able to do everything in an efficient manner. Okay. Now, um, also when we when the students bought tickets, there's also a thing where you could sign up for a bus. Uh, when did that come into play? Yeah, that was something right from the start that we wanted to do for our students because we know not everybody has a means of transportation to get down there. So we wanted to not let that prohibit anybody from going to the game since it's going to be a really awesome time. So we had that complimentary bus with snack and breakfast on it. So um, our students took full advantage of that and excited to see how that turns out. Now, looking back, obviously, the ticket, you know, games this weekend, um, with everything that happened, uh, what do you think went really well? What do you think if you did it again, you'd do, you'd change uh, from the whole, you know, selling the tickets for the students uh, for the game? Yeah, sure, for sure. I think one thing that was one of our strengths was making it an event-type selling base where it wasn't just uh, pick up your tickets at the Campus Center lobby from any time, 9 to 3, the rest of the month. We really built a lot of hype around it to create this really fun buying atmosphere with your friends. There was music playing. There was food and drink and People were excited. It was there was a sense of urgency to buy your ticket because there's a li- limited inventory, and um, I think that really played well in our favor. If I could do one thing differently, maybe um, the marketing plan. There was a couple things I might have tweaked just to make sure we broadcast our message out to the most amount of people and the right people. Um, so there was a couple things that we did really well, and all, always there's going to be some that you can improve on. So it's good to learn from that. Of course. Um, now, students uh, came very came early to uh, get the tickets because you know part of history. Wanted to buy the f- first one of the first tickets at MetLife. Um, do, were there any crazy kind of things that happened during the time when this uh, tickets were being sold at the A and E Center? Yeah, there was some things that surprised me. I mean, I expected a really good turnout that first night, but um, to say that we exceeded expectations would be correct. We had a th- a thousand tickets sold in the first night, which was amazing, and we had the line start to build up over an hour before we even started selling tickets. So our first sale kicked off at 6 p.m. There was people camped out waiting in line at 5 p.m. before I even showed up to get things ready. So <laughs> to see that really just made me excited, and I think the team was too. Okay, um, and also they had a a thing where it was a limit of four tickets uh, per student ID for purchasing it. Um, was that a decision by you or by the school, and why was that decision made? That was just a joint decision between um, everyone involved in playing this event. We wanted to make it accessible for students to buy tickets in bulk, but we didn't want people to go out and 
get a bunch of tickets on their own and prohibit others from buying tickets. You know what I mean? Like so, the reselling market. The reselling yeah. market. We didn't want that to happen. So we protected ourselves in that way. And I think it worked out in our favor because people weren't doing that and they were buying tickets for the right reasons. And if they wanted to purchase more than four, they just brought an extra ID or two and were able to purchase as many as they'd like. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had one word to describe this experience, uh, what would you use and why? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I would say gratifying, and mainly because myself and the students that we worked with together were able to just gain so much hands-on experience at such a young age that I think that we'll forever be grateful for Ithaca letting us do this. And down the road, we'll look back at this and say that we were a part of history, um, record attendance broken, and we were a part of that. And just going to probably look back on this years and years to come as one of my defining moments of college. Did you initially expect that it would break the record of most uh, tickets sold for a D3 game? I did, yeah. When the announcement was made all the way back in November of 2018, I immediately thought of that because I know the attendance record was something that people have talked about in the past. And um, I knew MetLife has, has a larger capacity than Target Field where the game was held that has the record now. And Cortica Jug just has so much history behind it. And with all the alumni and students that are bought into this process, I, I thought that it had the legs to do it. And it looks like we might. How do you think the atmosphere for Cortica will be different this year now that they decide to put it at MetLife this year? Yeah, I think that um, you'll see a lot, of, lot more people than usual because the parking lot is huge. So there's going to be a large tailgating atmosphere. Um, larger than like the parking lots we have at Ithaca that you might typically see. And then it's going to be a different dynamic. It's, it's not only students that are tailgating on campus. We're going to have a lot of alumni coming back, and it's going to be a fun atmosphere kind of watching everybody interact um, that day of. And I think that the stadium will have an effect of its own, watching our guys play in that big stadium um, bigger than they've ever played in before will definitely make it a little bit more exciting. Mm -hmm. Now, I I may have maybe may have been something about this online, but I missed it. Um, overall, if you if you I'm sure you, I'm guessing you guys counted it. How many tickets were um, sold through um, to the students like through the student rate um, at the college? Yeah, between our student faculty and staff, we sold over 2,800 tickets. So that was a, a win on our part. We thought that we did really well with that. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>